broken man No hope in the lamb, but the hope's in his hands And so, does he meet the standard? We know the answer's no God, I've come to your temple upon Hello YouTube. Uh, I received a personal message recently from a person with a username drop to zero regarding a comment I had posted on Keith Thompson's video that is called Kerrigan Skelly's Invalid Denial of My Pharisee Charge. What Drop to Zero contacted me about was the part of my comment that reads, The entire book of Galatians refutes Pelagianism. In response to my comment, Drop to Zero wrote to me in a private message saying, no, it doesn't. And he suggested that I watch a three-part video of a pastor rebuking a man for believing that we are saved by grace apart from the works of the law. Due to the fact that Drop to Zero openly advocates and features sinless perfectionist Pelagians such as Kerrigan Skelly and Jesse Morell on his YouTube page, I'll refer to him as a Pelagian and use this video to show just a few simple problems with this heretical theology, as well as respond to some things that were brought up by the videos that Drop to Zero suggested that I watch, as well as respond to certain things that Drop to Zero commented on when he messaged me. As a side note, I don't really know if Drop to Zero is a man or a woman just by looking at the YouTube page, so I'll just be referring to him as a man because I just don't know. It is my prayer to uphold sound doctrine, and it is also my prayer that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, which is from Ephesians 1.17. And it is also my prayer that Drop to Zero, as well as myself, as well as all Calvinists and Pelagians alike, will increase their knowledge of biblical scripture and come to sound doctrine, whatever that may be. For right now, it is obviously my belief that Calvinism is the truth, and I hold to it because I believe the Bible teaches it. I'll now begin my refutation of the Pelagian as well as Roman Catholic belief that in order to be saved, one must be saved both by faith and by works. I'll try to show that this is not only false teaching, but is in fact damnable, and Drop to Zero is incorrect in his assumptions and beliefs within his soteriology. During this video, when I call someone a Pelagian or refer to Pelagianism, what I mean is that a person or the theological system that explains that Jesus Christ forgives one's past sins, but now after being forgiven of your past sins, you must live in perfect moral obedience to the law in order to remain justified and in order to gain salvation. I will now make a positive case against Pelagianism through key texts in Galatians and then move on from there. The reason I appeal to Galatians as being evidence against Pelagianism is because often throughout Galatians, as well as the rest of the New Testament, especially in the writings of Paul, being saved by God's grace and being saved by the works of the law are completely opposed to one another. A great example of this in Galatians is found in chapter 2, verse 21. It says, I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. You can see that we have here a complete division between being saved by the grace of God and being saved through the law. Sinless perfectionists who believe Jesus merely forgives one's past sins and then must live in perfect obedience to the law in order to maintain and achieve righteousness are at odds to this verse as well as the purpose of the letter of Galatians. If righteousness can be achieved as a result of obeying the law, the Apostle Paul says the death of Jesus Christ was in vain. And not only would Christ's death be in vain, but the grace of God would be nullified. Pelagians like Drop to Zero nullify the grace of God through moralistic teachings and work-based salvation. The very purpose of the letter of Galatians is to show that we cannot be perfected by the law, but only through Jesus Christ and his death. Another place that says works of the law are not the foundation of our salvation is in chapter 3 verse 10. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. People like Drop to Zero submit themselves to God's law thinking that they will continue to be justified by perfectly obeying every aspect of it. But in this verse it says all that rely on the works of the law as being foundational to a person's justification are under a curse. The Apostle Paul's condemnation of having the law being the means of justification reaches its climax in chapter 5. 
For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You are severed from Christ, you who would be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. Notice how in verse 3 the apostle says that they would be obligated to keep the whole law. Sinless perfectionists do believe that they are obligated to keep the whole law in order to remain justified. So why would Paul include this in his condemnation? It is because we as humans have no ability to keep the whole law perfectly. As I already mentioned in Galatians 3.10, those that rely on the works of the law are under a curse. The only difference between the Judaizers and modern-day sinless perfectionist Pelagians is that the Judaizers added one exception to salvation, and sinless perfectionists add countless things. One of the last verses that Pelagians cannot consistently believe is found in Galatians 6.14. It says, But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. This means that salvation comes only through the cross. That's why it says, far be it from me to boast except in the cross. If salvation is a result of Jesus forgiving your past sins through the cross, combined with your righteousness that you won through obedience to the law, then you would have a means and a reason for boasting outside of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, thus nullifying the grace of God and nullifying Galatians 6.14. So, what have we learned so far? If righteousness can be found through the law, then there is no purpose for the death and atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those that submit to the law for justification are under God's curse. Submitting to the law as grounds for justification is evidence that you have been severed from Christ and that you have fallen away from the grace of God. And finally, the only means of boasting that a Christian has in this life and in the next is that he was saved by the atoning death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing else. Let's also look at some ways that Paul described the law. The law brings the curse. We were held captive under the law. The yoke of slavery, the antithesis of the law, is the freedom that we now have in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yet, because of false brothers secretly brought in, who slipped in to spy out our freedom that we have in Christ Jesus, so that they might bring us into slavery, or freedom, Christ has set us free. We are free from the demands of the law because of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. However solid I think this reasoning is, I realize that it might not reach Pelagians because they have a different idea in their head of what justification is and of what the grace of God is. A sinless perfectionist might say something along the lines of, Oh, well, I agree with Galatians because they were looking only towards their works as means of justification, whereas I look both toward the cross and what I do because synergism is the way in which God saves us. The only excuse that Drop to Zero and others who submit to this understanding can make is that those that submitted to circumcision looked only to their works as means of justification, whereas those that support the theology of Kerrigan Skelly, Jesse Morrell, Charles Finney, and Pelagius believe that justification is a cooperative effort consisting of both God's grace and the individual's perfect obedience. However, this is not the case. The Galatians did look to Jesus for their justification, but that circumcision combined with God's work was necessary for salvation. The slippery argument of the moralist is that those spoken of in Galatians do not claim to rely on God's grace in any way, but rather have wholeheartedly given themselves over to the Mosaic law only as means of justification. The problem with this assertion is that the apostle tells them that they are obligated to keep the whole law. If those misled by the Judaizers believed that they were obligated to keep the whole law in order to be justified, as opposed to merely adding circumcision in addition to believing in Christ, why would the apostle tell them something that they already believed to be true? Paul telling them that they were obligated to keep the whole law implies that they weren't looking only to the law as means of justification, but to Jesus as well as the law. What modern theological system believes salvation is a result of God's works and your own? Sinless perfectionist Pelagianism. Who, like the Judaizers, gives a condition for salvation based upon what you do? 
Pelagians. Who would be condemned in our modern day context? Pelagians. As I have heard Dropta Zero's defense on what I called Pelagianism, and as I have heard on what his view of God's grace is, it is much similar to 2 Nephi 25-23 in the Book of Mormon. For we know that it is by grace that we are saved, after all we can do. This is a flat-out contradiction of the word grace. By its very definition, if you are saved by grace, then you are not saved by anything that you have done or ever will do. You will be surprised that my favorite example of this is not found in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, leading up to Romans 11, 6. Just as there was a remnant back then who had not bowed the knee to Baal, so too there is a remnant now chosen by grace. Please notice what Romans 11.6 says. But, if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works, otherwise grace would no longer be grace. It is here that we see the inconsistency of the perfectionist position. Because Pelagians rely on Jesus to an extent, they can believe in the two impossibilities that they are both saved by the grace of God and also what they do. Let me summarize what I have explained so far. If we have righteousness to boast of as a result of obeying the law, Jesus Christ's death was in vain. The law is explained to be a curse and the yoke of slavery. If we submit to the law, then we are obligated to keep the whole law in order to be justified. By works of the law, no one will be justified. There is no real distinction between sinless perfectionists and the Judaizers. If salvation is conditional upon things that you do, works done by you in righteousness, then you are not saved by the grace of God. Sinless perfectionists believe that they have a means of boasting outside of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Although this only scratches the surface of Pelagian error, I continue to affirm that the entire book of Galatians refutes Pelagianism and sinless perfectionism. This is a major heresy that must continue to be addressed and refuted.